The magic of GraphQL combined with dogs. You've got to see this one, how to build a GraphQL client, only on on.net. Welcome to another episode of On.net. My name is Jeremy Lickness, and today we're wrapping up a series on GraphQL. We've talked about what it is. We even looked at how to stand up a GraphQL endpoint. So today I'm here with Brandon Minnick, and he's going to show us how to consume GraphQL in a client application. That's right. Thanks for having me, Jeremy. And yeah, specifically, we'll be working with a Xamarin mobile app today. So I'm a mobile app developer. One of the reasons I love GraphQL is handmade for mobile apps. And so we'll show off some of the benefits of how we can use it in a mobile app, and we'll write that code together today. Well, so one of the things that excites me is I'm not a mobile developer, but I am a C-sharp.net developer. And I understand you're going to show us how to do this using C-sharp for your mobile app. That's right. So we'll be using a technology called Xamarin. And Xamarin, if you haven't heard of it, is a way to create native iOS and Android apps all in C-sharp. And so the way that works is Xamarin just wraps every single iOS API and every single Android API and exposes them to us in C-sharp. So when we are creating our app using C-sharp, we're still hitting the same native APIs. When the compiler compiles it down, it still compiles it down to the native code. Okay. So we still get the native performance. It's a totally native app, but we can use the language we know and love in C-sharp. Nice. And one of the cool things is because it is every single API, we're not just talking about iOS apps and Android apps. We're talking about iPhone, talking about iPad. We're talking about Android Wear, Apple TV, Apple Watch, Android TV. And that's because everything you can do in Objective-C, Swift, Java, or Kotlin can be done in C Sharp using Xamarin. And I don't have to learn four other languages. Exactly. <laughs> nice. So enough talking about it. Let's, let's jump into some code. So I have a uh, Xamarin mobile app here. Let's go ahead and run it. It won't be very flashy because we haven't written the code to consume the GraphQL endpoint yet, but here it is. This will connect to my GraphQL API that we wrote in the previous episode, and it will display a list of all my favorite dogs. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into the code here because we have some work to do. So the first thing I want to point out, we are using a GraphQL SDK. So specifically, if we look at my NuGet packages, I'm using the GraphQL client. And this is nice because it has a lot of wrappers around HTTP client. So it removes a lot of that boilerplate code that we would normally have to do. And so what do I mean by that? Well, let's write some quick and dirty code. Okay. So, Yes, you know, as good C Sharp .NET developers, we should do things like reuse HTTP client. In this example, we're writing quick and dirty code, so we're going to do some bad things like newing it up every time and disposing uh -huh. it. But uh, do check out the finished example where it does follow all the best practices. Okay. So, so let's get started. Well, speaking of HTTP client, we'll new up our client, but this time it's a GraphQL client. So if we can type it right, Graph. QL client, there we go. And this takes in as a parameter a GraphQL HTTP client option. So it's a mouthful, but basically what it wants to know is what is your API endpoint? So we'll pass that in. I've already jotted that down. So in my backend constants, we'll pass in the GraphQL API. And of course, it's yelling at me because that needs to be a URI. There we go. Cool. So now, now we have our client, and what we will pass into our client is our GraphQL query, because we need right. to tell it exactly the data we want, right? So for our query, let's see. Let's do this first. Let's jump over to our GraphQL endpoint. And you know what? Probably also good if we made sure it was running in the background. So let's run the, the API in the background. It's always useful to have it up and running when you want to connect to it. Probably smart, right? <laughs> okay, so the API is running, and what we want to query for is a list of all the dogs. This right. is the same query we just created in the last episode. 
And so what we have here is, actually that looks pretty good. We have a GraphQL query that retrieves all the dogs, all of my favorite dogs, and some of their info. But let's just go ahead and grab all of the info. So we have title breed avatar, so let's include the birth date. We'll grab coat color, and let's see, website URL. Press run to make sure that works. It looks like it's still good. And so now, what do we do with this query to use it on the client side? Well, what we'll do, we'll create a our request. So this will be a GraphQL request. And in this GraphQL request, this is where we pass in that query. So it comes with a property called query, and I'm just going to create a string, and I'm just literally going to copy paste that. Now, it doesn't look great at first because we got to get rid of those carriage returns, so let's, let's make it look a little prettier here. There we go. We need a shortcut <laughs> to make into one line. That would be great. I mean, the nice thing is once you have this, you don't really have to write this query again unless you want to change the shape of your data. But there we go. So now we have our GraphQL request. And just like with HTTP client, we can get our response. So we'll say await client.send query async and pass in that that GraphQL request. And so now, what we have back is our JSON response. So just like we got here, this is the data that has come back from our GraphQL request. So, And we want to make it a response, not a response. Smart man. I know these things <laughs> will come back to haunt us later. <laughs> All right. So, right, so we have this response. It's our JSON. Um, and one of the cool things with this client SDK is it can deserialize the JSON for us. So what we can do is we can now create our, our dog images list using our response. And what I like to do is use this method called get data field as. So it's a little bit of a funky name. Like why does it say get data field? What's a data field? Well, every GraphQL response comes back with this data, data object. And then inside of data are the fields that you asked for. So what, we, what we're telling this SDK here is get data field as, and we'll tell it that we're expecting a I enumerable of our dog model. And we have to pass in, see it's asking for a field name. So when we go back and look at our query, well, this is the data object, and then the field we want is dogs. dogs. So we'll copy dogs, and we'll tell it to deserialize dogs as a dog images model I enumerable. And so now we have all of that information back on our, our mobile app, back on our Xamarin app, and we can add that to our UI. So we'll say for each dog in our dog images, dog images, and we'll add that to the, our collection. So first we cleared the collection, we got our, got our dogs, and now we can add them in one by one. And if we did everything right, we should see our dogs appear on the iOS app. So da -da -da. let's give it a shot. Here we go. All right, app's launching, makes the API request, and there and we go. And we have dogs. So we have all of my favorite dogs. It looks like their avatar images are a little slow loading today, but you know, if we still want to see a picture of Kirby, we can click on Kirby and it'll take us There's to the image. Kirby. Or if you want Waffles to cheer us up today, we can go say hi to Waffles. <laughs> I love the names. <laughs> and, so, and so, right, so with just a couple lines of code, we're able to query our GraphQL endpoint. If we didn't want information, like, for example, we have the birth date listed here, all we have to do, we could remove that birth date, and then we would no longer come back in our JSON response. And, or if we wanted to add maybe something more to our UI, we can add that field in here and it allows us as mobile developers to really take control of the data in the back end because now we can update our UI and make new screens and pages without needing to wait for necessarily a new REST API to come because we can request any data we want with GraphQL. 
So with the sharing of the client and the server using .NET standard libraries, is it possible to have some sort of fluent interface to build up the queries, or is it mostly string-based for now? So this library uses string-based. Um, there are a couple different libraries available. Like in the uh, creating a GraphQL backend episode, we talked about another library called Hot Chocolate. Right. Well, that same company, uh, their company name is Chili Cream, and they make a client-side <laughs> library called Strawberry Shake. So really fun creative nice. names. And yeah, they've, cr they've created a way that we don't have to hard code our query as a string. And they've come up with some really unique sol solutions to try out. So there are a couple options. Uh, and I'd recommend checking out all of them. Find which one you like best. Find which one, maybe one's more simple and we want to stick to that. Maybe this one has less hard coded strings and we want to stick to that. But there's a lot of cool libraries out there that we can check out. And speaking of which, if you want to learn more, we have links to all of that information. So we nice. put together this landing page just for this episode uh, series today, where you can find all the information about GraphQL. You can find links to docs. You can find the code sample that we were just working on, the, the one that's actually completed that follows the good best practices. It doesn't write quick and dirty code like we did here. And so I highly recommend checking that out. And in there, we can find links to the GraphQL libraries like Hot Chocolate, GraphQL, Client, Strawberry Shake, and, and play around with them on your own. Nice. So that has been GraphQL. Seems like a very powerful way to query data. Looks straightforward to get started. We've got some clients out there to hit the ground running. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing GraphQL with us. Thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Jeremy Lickness. You've watched another episode of On.Net. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss a show. And if you're interested in more shows, check out the link right here. Thanks.